Hey everybody, Ken Walker here with another Photoshop tip. This time, uh, this is going to be pretty short, I got to tell you, but it's been a while since I've posted. So I wanted to get you something that would be helpful and yet pretty quick because it's a very busy time of the year for me. But what I got going on here is three layers, vignetting on the top and a background on the bottom. And then I've got this layer right here in the middle that's just got a logo for Ibanez guitars used to be one of my favorites. I uh, don't play them too much anymore, but um, what we're going to do here is real quick. I'll just go in and I'll add a stroke to this and let's do something a little bit more. Yeah, like a light. Oh, I don't know. Let's do let's do white for right now and I'm going to fatten it up a little bit. You can't hardly see it because of our background. Okay, but there we go. Now, again, can't really even see it, right? But here's what we're going to do. I want to take the effect that I just applied and make it an actual part of the image, not make it, you know, an effect that's applied to the image. So what I'm going to do, and there is actually a way to do this with smart objects, but if I don't want to create a smart object, all that I have to do is create a layer below this layer. So I'm going to hold the control key down. Click the new layer icon, and then I'll head back up to the layer I was on and press Control E, and this would be Command E on the Macintosh. And that merges that layer down. What it does is it applies the effect. Notice that there is no effect listed there anymore. So if I go in now and I go back and I do a stroke, and uh, let's do a black stroke. Okay, and I'll leave it pretty thin. So now you can see what happens. I have added that. And the reason that this, it, it compounds, and the reason this is so helpful is because how many times do you want to really, you know, make text kind of puff out like this with additional strokes, but then you want a final, like a drop shadow. You don't want that drop shadow to go off of the original text area. You want it to go off this whole border outline stuff that you did. All right. So now I'll do it again. On this layer, hold Control down. Uh, this would be Command on the Mac. Press the new layer icon. And I can go back up to my layer. Do Control E. That merges it down again. Okay. So now all of those effects, the two strokes that I've added onto that, they are a part of the graphic now. Not anything that we can turn off or on. And for that matter, not anything that we can change. Uh, so that is kind of a drawback. If you do this with smart objects, then at least you have the opportunity to go back and make some modifications. But for those of you that are still stuck on, you know, Photoshop 7 or something like that, this is a way around that if you don't have smart objects. Now, let's go ahead and add a drop shadow. And you can see that that drop shadow comes in right there where we want it to. Basically, right on the edge of our logo edge of that stroke that we created. Okay, that's Ken Walker's tip for this week, and I hope that's a help to you, and hopefully I'll see you again real soon. Don't forget to check out my website, photoshopfordigitalphotography.com. And by the way, if you're looking at getting some tutorials created for Photoshop and a variety of other applications, uh, as well as a lot of different promo stuff I got going on, check out my other website at walkerstudiopro.com.